Hey guys, it's Alex here, back with another Benny commentary. Today we're going to be talking about introducing your iguana to the other animals in your house. Now, as you guys can probably see, Benny, Benny's, Benny's a real cool dude. <laughs> he's a very nice dog, very, very friendly, but he's still a puppy, so he's, he's kind of nippy. He can be a little, little attention seeking, kind of nibbles at you every once in a while. Um, that's the case with a lot of puppies and dogs. And there he goes. Whew. Now that we got that out of the way, gonna return to the uh, easier subject to <laughs> take a video of. Um, and that can be a bit of an issue for your iguana because iguanas can be stressed out really easily, very defensive, um, don't like people invading their territory. So how do you create a habitat or an environment where your iguana and your dog can coexist? So, that's a really good question. Um, the real answer is that uh, you probably shouldn't. Unless you've got a really small dog or one that uh, your iguana could beat in a fight, you really can't create an environment where a dog or a cat or uh, what, a, like a guinea pig even, can coexist with your iguana. These iguanas are so naturally territorial and aggressive that they can uh, they can get into some real fights, and uh, that's why I don't even recommend co-housing your iguana with other iguanas or other reptiles. Um, so I, I really wouldn't recommend it, but if you've got a small place where your dog is going to be constantly um, coming into the room where your iguana's in, or being around the cage of your iguana. Uh, then I can give you some tips on how to prevent any disasters from happening while you're away or just in general. So I've got a couple recommendations for you. <laughs> Sorry, he's a little camera shy. Um, what I would do is, uh, as you probably know, if you've got a decently sized dog, the screen that you put in is not going to hold back a dog from getting into your cage. It might be able to keep a large iguana out, but a full-grown dog is definitely not going to have a problem with getting through that. And um, when you got a giant door like this that you sometimes leave open, uh, Yulia loves to wander around this room and just explore stuff. Um, so every once in a while, just leave the door open, shut these, just let her roam around, um, hang out with the reptiles on top of her cage. <laughs> uh, there can be a couple problems with um, just in case your dog decides that they've got a real vendetta against your iguana and wants to go in for the, the chomping match, they can definitely get through the cage. So I've got a couple recommendations for you that can maybe help save your iguana in the long run. First off, I'd recommend, of course, making your own little reptile room. Um, an area in your house where only you're going to have your reptiles. There are doors you can shut to make sure nobody else or no other pets come in. Uh, of course, this is wishful thinking, and it isn't really the case for a lot of people. Unless you have your iguana in your bedroom, of course, which is also a really good idea. I did that with Yulia for the first year of her life, and uh, she enjoyed it. I did spend a lot of late nights on the computer, though, so I had to, had to move her in here so she could actually get some sleep. <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I'd recommend putting them in a secure room that you know uh, you know that other animals won't get in. And also having high perches in your cage is just a good idea in general, as uh, iguanas feel a lot safer when they have a, uh, an overhead view of whatever is hanging out with them. Um, it makes them a lot less stressed out compared to if something is towering over them. And also, in the case of animals, if you have a small dog, a high perch can actually save them from uh, being eaten alive. So that's, that's a pretty big plus. Uh, along with the reduction of stress. Um, it also can make them feel a lot less stressed out when there's an animal just roaming around the room. Benny loves to check out this tree I have over here that I took out after getting in the new hibiscus. Um, so when he's walking around, she doesn't feel too stressed out because she's got that nice overhead perch. And of course, just making sure your cage is secure. Uh, making sure there are no holes in the screening uh, at it's stapled well or drilled well. Uh, is pretty important. Uh, just in case, I, I check it every once in a while to make sure that Yulia doesn't have an escape route to uh, meet up with my dog or to uh, just escape without me knowing and disappear into the night. 
Uh, that's just good to check for in general, um, but also good in this scenario. Make sure your dog doesn't pop in or uh, your lizard doesn't pop out and meet them. These are all pretty basic safety protocols for your iguana. Uh, hopefully though, by the end of it, your iguana should be a lot less stressed out by humans and your pets. Uh, really, there's not many ways for your iguana to get friendly around your dog. And uh, even if you see YouTube videos about it, that doesn't mean you should try it. Uh, I've seen a lot of iguanas <laughs> uh, have some bad times with other pets including other iguanas. So just take that into account. You don't want to risk anything. Uh, just treat it like your baby. That's what I always do. I try and make sure Yulia is in no harm's way and that she is safe and secure at all times. So just use common sense. And um, hey, maybe, uh, maybe someday your iguana will bond with your dog. Did you see that? She just yawned. It's the first time I ever got that on camera. <laughs> well, with that being done, um, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. I wish you luck with your uh, pet adventures, and um, I'll see you around.